today I'm doing something a little bit different. I hope you like it. And if you like it, I can do more of these. We are going to be doing a fashion analysis, style analysis, whatever you want to call it, of And Just Like That season two for the first three episodes. So Sex and the City is one of those series that a lot of us hold very close to our hearts, especially if you love fashion. The reboot and just like that came out last year. We're now on season two. There was always going to be a lot of scrutiny about the storylines, yes, but also about the fashion, especially because Patricia Field, who was the costume designer and stylist for Sex and the City, is not the costume designer for And Just Like That. I'm going to be focusing on episodes one, two, and three. There will be some like high level plot spoilers, so keep that in mind. I also wanted to pick outfits that I could tell you where most of the pieces are from. I could tell you who the designers are and the brands and all of that. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> <gasps> Never. Season two, episode one, named Met Cute. There are some Met Gala looks. But before we get to that, we see Miranda on the West Coast in this flowy sort of color blocked striped halter neck. Here's the thing. I always sort of think that they do Miranda dirty when it comes to fashion. That's just my personal opinion. Okay, this dress is by Sylvia Chirassi. I hope I've pronounced that right. And it very much ties into this whole, you know, she's trying out living life on the West Coast, laid back California style. It's flowy, it's carefree, which is, you know, the opposite of her personality throughout sort of Sex and the City and up until like, what, halfway through the last season, right? So we're going to sort of see a change in style for these big changes in her life. It's, it's fine. You know, I'm probably not going to remember that dress going forward. Now in another scene, we have Carrie and Charlotte. Charlotte is charlotting in a very Charlotte dress. Okay, so this dress is by Samantha Sung. It's a nice little sort of shirt dress. She's got a little white belt there. Once again, it's fine. I think, you know, we could have had something a little bit better for Charlotte here, but that's just me. Harry is actually wearing a vintage wedding dress that they repurposed into a jumpsuit. She's got a Tom Brown bag and vintage Vivian Westwood heels. And then she also has this hat. It's giving a day at the races. It's giving Kentucky Derby, is it not? I'm not necessarily a fan of the bag. I actually quite like this sort of, you know, Victorian-y looking jumpsuit with the heels. I think it works. The hat, I'm not a hat person. But, you know, I'm coming from a place of bias. <laughs> then we move into the Met looks, okay? Hold on to your horses. Starting off with Carrie, this was 10 out of 10. This was brilliant. And there's this sort of whole sort of, you know, storyline of repurposing her pain. And now we've got the Vivian Westwood wedding dress from the first Sex and City film where, you know, semi-jilted at the altar, not quite, big bust up. So I love that they've brought this dress back. I really like how they styled this. So basically for this, the designer that she was going to use, Smoke, there were issues. However, one part of the look was this turquoise satin cape, which was then styled with this dress. And yes, the, you know, dead bird fascinator almost, once again, odd, but beloved as a part of, you know, Sex and City history. It's over the top. It's exactly what you would hope for the Met Ball carpet, right? It's larger than life, it's fabulous. I love the fact that you have this wedding dress and then you have all of the blues tying in so nicely together. I loved it. Then, Charlotte. This look is truly offensive. What is this circus ringleader? I'm shocked. Bear in mind, okay, that the Met Gala theme is veiled beauty. And, you know, apparently this was meant to be like an equestrian look that they wanted to modernise with the latex corset bodysuit. Um, and also the latex shoes will get to that and the gloves. Oh, and she's also got a, a whip. She's got a riding whip. 
it's so it's an assault on the eyes i actually think that we could have done this little you know modernizing whatever we could have done the corset with the hot pink satin blazer i actually have no details on any pieces of the outfit apart from the fact that the hat is stephen jones and the shoes are amina muadi if the skirt whatever matched the blazer it's the fact that then they've just thrown in this girl she look it looks like the stripes on the top of a circus tent can you imagine your first your first met ball and this is and this is no i wouldn't be able to get over it lisa todd wexley otherwise known as ltw now she is in valentino from head to toe once again, this is a Met Gala look. It's dramatic, okay? The way that the uh, the train is like, what? 12 feet long or something ridiculous. Story behind this dress. The dress originally was in a Valentino show, but they made it custom in this red and they extended the train for the show. The headpiece, it's ridiculous, but it ties in really nicely. And again, you have this veiled beauty. That's the theme of the Met Gala it then makes sense. I thought she looked beautiful. I loved like the neckline cut and the fact that it was, you know, an empire waist and all of that. And she just, you know, flowed through the streets of Manhattan. Lovely. Seema. Apparently, so this is a Balmain look and apparently they spotted it in an outlet uh, at Sawgrass Mills in Florida. Whilst I think it looks good on Seema, I really like these, these like jewel tones on her. I think it looks great. I love the satin and it looks rich and the shoes work well with it. Is this Met Gala level? I don't think it is. And I think that Seema would have really brought it. This is something that she would wear to lunch on a Friday afternoon, you know? So this one let me down. Then we have a Seema look that's bringing it. She's going for her hair appointment. She is in a head to toe Sergio Hudson leopard print bold look. Do you spot the Fendi first there in the large size? Because I do. Nice choice there. Matches perfectly with the shoes. Yes. This is bold. It's confident, just like she is. I loved it. This was very her, and it was such a moment for something as mundane as going to get your hair done. This is just a bag spot, because we don't really see much of the outfit. Charlotte is seen with a Bulgari Serpenti bag, and I just want to say that is such a Charlotte bag. It's like structured and a little bit uptight, but in a nice way. It's very sort of good girl looking with like a little bit of an edge. Controversial look we have here from Carrie. This one came out, I think with like paparazzi pictures while they were filming. So we knew that this one was coming. A 1960s flight suit that has been like recycled and um, upcycled by Converted Closet. Dior shoes with socks. And the socks are the Fendi baguette socks from the baguette collection. It has like a tiny little satin baguette bag. And of course, she is with her J.W. Anderson pigeon clutch. It is a clutch in the shape of a pigeon. You open up its arms and then that's where you have access to your belongings. It's a look that makes sense for Carrie. If anybody can pull off a 1960s upcycled flight suit, it's her. It's also very her with the socks with the open toe sandals. That's something that she would do. But let's really focus on the bag here. I love how absolutely zero attention was given to it. As in, it was just like, nobody mentioned the bag. Nobody mentioned the fact that she's just, you know, carrying a pigeon in her hand. I love that it was not highlighted at all because that is something that she would just randomly turn up with on a Wednesday afternoon, you know? I kind of love how frivolous and ridiculous it is. I like the fact that this very novelty item was paired with something that's a bit more, I don't know, sort of practical and workery in theory. Does that make sense? <laughs> then we have a carry look that really, this one stumped me. This was, so many things were happening, okay? There's a lot to get through. <sighs> this is giving art teacher. We all had an art teacher that dressed like this. This is not giving fashionista, okay, in my eyes. Vintage blue and white dress. A metallic floral blazer. Oh, it's metallic to just give it even more in case there wasn't enough sort of patterns and styles going on. Let's throw in metallic. From Shea Sarah Vintage. Uh, and you've got Margiela ankle boots. Hate it. Hated it. <laughs> the bag that sort of goes with it is also semi-sad looking, as is the tote that she carries. That gave nothing. Right. Tragic scene. Seamus Birkin gets stolen. Sort of cinematically, 
is she using the right word? This was a really good dress choice in that this is a Fendi uh, dress, white Gucci sandals, and the dress sort of has this uh, sort of attached cape. So as she's running through the streets, you know, she's running in this like ridiculously elegant look, trying to chase down a robber and it's billowing in the street. It just even gives even more ridiculousness to the situation. So I think it works sort of, you know, to the scene's benefit. And it's also something that she would wear. I, th I, th I thought she looked great. We've got Naya and LTW in a scene here um, where they're filming a documentary. Naya is a professor, okay? She is a studious woman. I do like the look here. I have no details on where the dress is from. It's a nice sort of casual shirt dress with a gathering, but I like the fact that it's got a red belt matching the red shoes. I think it suits her, it looks really great. I love LTW's suit here. The bag, they do this to all of LTW's bag. The bags come out of nowhere. They make no sense for the, for the look, okay? So whilst I love the Rick Owens blazer and the Rick Owens trousers, matched with these super high tealy greeny heels that match perfectly with the green running through the trousers and the blazer. Love this look. Why have they gone and added this Louis Vuitton Fornacetti face bag? It, uh, it makes no sense and we'll see this again with another look. Everything except the bag looks fantastic. I love this sodding look. It's made me think, hold on a second, do I maybe need this Rick Owens outfit? You know, maybe just a suggestion. It's professional for what she's doing, but it's fun, it's interesting. I love the look that she wore in this next scene where she's like at school, there was some sort of um, school PTA meeting of sorts. This dress is 10 out of 10. This is an Elzinga black and white puff sleeve blazer dress. It's like half of it's white, half of it's black obsessed. I love the puff sleeves on it. It's a mini dress. She suits it. I love the really bold gold bangles that go along with it. 10 out of 10. Why this bag? Why this Louis Vuitton? I can't remember what collection that was from. It was a, it was a capsule collection. Why this bag? It makes no sense. That's sad. What's arguably even more sad is Miranda's demise of fashion the longer she stays. <laughs> On the west coast, she is here in a red Valentino maxi skirt with a tank top. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's just not the level of fashion you would expect from a show that is known from its fashion, you know? And as, as I said, they continue to do Miranda dirty. And she's in this bucket hat and this, you know, beige jacket with that woven tote. I mean, do they not care? We also see the return of a legend in this episode. Carrie's walking down the street in this teal and fuchsia combo with a sequined Fendi baguette bag. And I think that this is maybe a bit of a tie-in because in Sex and the City, the series, her Fendi baguette was stolen for her, from her. And in this episode, in this show, Seema's Birkin was stolen from her. And maybe it's a little bit like, you know, it eventually comes back around. I don't know, but we know the significance of a Fendi baguette to SJP and the show in general. And it was nice to see it in this fabulous sequined fuchsia moment. And I love when Carrie wears pieces that are seen to be quite dressy or like eveningy pieces worn really casually during the day. Love that. Carrie also takes herself shopping. A little bit of retail therapy was had in the shoe department at Bergdorf. And whilst, you know, not all of the shoes are highlighted, I thought that here I would take the chance to identify some of the shoes because they all sort of make sense. Some make more sense than others, okay? On her right foot, she is wearing a Giuseppe Zanotti crystal mule. Love it. On the left foot is a Gucci pump. It's fine, whatever. But what we see in the boxes also, there are these yellow satin Gucci heels that have a piercing detail in the heel. Love that. So her. It's quirky. It's interesting. As are the Loewe rose heels. Yes, very carry. And when she's on the phone later on in the episode, she's seen wearing the Loewe balloon heels because of course she would. That is such a carry shoe. So I think they did well with the shoe choices there. And the final look from the third episode, and again, maybe this is a little bit of a hint as we can foresee things through fashion choices in these shows. Miranda is wearing this sort of uh, very dusty blue 
jumpsuit. It's a little bit more tailored, it's a little bit more work appropriate. You can see somebody wearing this to work, to her old lawyer job maybe. A crossbody bag because she's practical, okay? And then you have also these sort of uh, brown sandals that she's wearing, but is this a little bit of an ode because at the end of uh, the episode she goes back to New York. Was that foretold through the fashion choices? This is a little bit more in line with her New York style, okay? So I thought that was an interesting choice. See, this suits Miranda. I think this suits Miranda. Is it the most exciting thing? No, but it's definitely, do you want to know what? It's the best look we've seen from Miranda for the first three episodes. I'll tell you that much. What do you think of the fashion choices for the season thus far? If you like this, I shall continue. And let me know if you had a favorite look. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.